If you want to wrap yourself in old glory, you get yourself a brass band. If you want to grab the media spotlight, you put on a show. The Six Flags Corporation did all that and more this afternoon with ceremonies to mark the opening of its new power plant. Mayor Schaefer played his role to the hilt. He came dressed in a morning coat and acted very much like the proud father at his daughter's wedding. And you know what we ought to do? We ought to all stand up and say to them, thank you, Six Flags, for putting in $28 million on the waterfront. We thank you. By this time, all eyes at the waterfront were fixed on the show just west of the aquarium. The mayor walked to center stage and threw the switch to officially open Baltimore's newest attraction. If there were no Harbor Place, no aquarium, no Bush Gardens or King's Dominion or Disney World, the Six Flags power plant would look pretty good. And it is pretty good, but the question is, is that good enough to make it in what has become a very competitive field? The power plant sparkles. Turning what it was to what it is is incredible. And the kids who work there sparkle with smiles the management won't let quit. It is clean and friendly and pleasant and it will increase that critical mass of attractions that bring people to town. But you know how it is when a friend says a movie is great and you're disappointed because it's only good? The power plant is billed as not an amusement but an amazement, and it's not really all that amazing. It's a pleasant way to spend a couple of hours, a nice place to shop with a full array of t-shirt emporiums and caricaturists, but perhaps not a lot better than Harbor Place, which you don't have to pay to get into. True, the power plant has some pretty dazzling light shows, put in the context of the future as seen by Phineas Flagg. And one in particular, Pandora's Box, is probably guaranteed to give your kids nightmares as a souvenir. The Sensorium is my choice as the best of the shows, with its smells and 3D thrills, which make it feel as though the earth moves. But the food is pretty ordinary at best, limited to ice cream at $1.50 a shot, Cokes and beer for 95 cents and $1.25, and brownies, which are good and ought to be, since they are by Ms. Dessert and brought over from Harbor Place. And for a place saying it's not an amusement park, it's surprising to find cotton candy. There's a video arcade, which doesn't show a whole lot of imagination, and a not unprecedented ski ball area, for which you pay extra, and one imaginative concession where you can have a picture taken which puts you on the cover of the magazine of your dreams for $9.95. And speaking of money, there's that matter of the price of admission. Is it worth $8 or 6 for kids? It'll cost a family of four upwards of $40 or even 50 to park, enter, and eat there for an afternoon, and that's hard to justify, except perhaps for tourists. But there's no reason to be mad at the place or to wish it ill. All entertainment is expensive. You pay prime rib prices if you like the product. Each of us can decide whether this option gets our business. I'm Andy Barth at large for News Scene 2. You do? Why? Because there's so many things here, you don't know which you're going to play. What I was most impressed was the, the, the smell of everything. The chocolate and the bananas and the strawberries. Anything would pertain to food. <laughs> it's great. It's great? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to tell your friends when you get home? Yeah. When they ask you what you saw, what are you going to tell them? 
movies and games and neat stuff.